our pleasure an exciting opportunity to welcome in a member of the BYU Hall of Fame, a three-time Super Bowl champion, five-time Pro Bowler, and president of the NFL Alumni Association, Bart Oates, on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Bart, welcome to BYU Sports Nation, making your show debut. Hey, thank you very much. I am honored. I mean, uh, this is one of those things, you know, it's one of those bucket list items, so I can check that one off. <laughs> you mean for us? <laughs> uh, it's my bucket list, yeah. Hey, Bart, are you going for Merlin I've been Olson? Waiting for a phone call. Are you going for Merlin Olson Little House on the Prairie look? I like it. Yeah, no, this is my COVID look. Uh, I just uh, figure we're not, uh, we're here, we, we're isolated, been quarantined. So I said, uh, my wife's not real happy about it, but um, as soon as the uh, quarantine is over with, the, uh, the beard goes. Okay, well, clearly you have uh, a face and a voice for TV. And with that in mind, uh, we did some research and, and found out that you were a wedding guest in a 1992 episode of Guiding Light. What do you remember about that? Uh, nothing, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Really? You sure? <laughs> it's not a thing? It didn't you happen? Tell me about that. That's news to me. You, usually, it's uh, I, get, I get hit up about the... Uh, uh, the hunger teen uh, episode, but um, no, that I don't know about our, our research team. We're going to have to check with them. Yeah. We're going to have to talk okay. to them about that. Okay. Obviously we just needed you on the show. You're one of the BYU legends, but number 50 is a number that is hotly contested uh, between mm. you and Trevor Maddich and even Greg kite. We're going to have Trevor. Greg on as well. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Number 50. So I guess make the case for who you think is the best number 50 in BYU history among those three. Well, I'll put myself at number three. Uh, I think Trevor had a much better uh, co collegiate career than I did. He was on the national championship team. He was all American. He was a first round draft pick. I didn't even get drafted in the NFL. I went to the USFL. Um, so I, I, mine was a bit uh, circuitous uh, as it was. And then Greg Kite was just a stud on the basketball court. So, um, you know, I'll say it, it's be, me, it's between Trevor and uh, Greg. Uh, I like both of them. They're both good friends. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to give them both a, uh, a one and one A. So you said that Trevor had a much more uh, prestigious collegiate career than you, Bart, but then you yeah. go on to the pro scenario where you're a three-time Super Bowl champion, a five-time pro bowler. So can we make you number one once you guys got to the pros? Is that fair? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm hey, I'm honored to just be in in the uh, be considered with uh, Greg and with uh, Trevor. So I'm happy about it. Let's talk about the difference of what linemen do nowadays versus back then. Because you are listed at six four two forty two. I saw another spot six four two sixty five. It was a different era, right? In terms of the size that you were as a lineman. Say nowadays you'd have you'd have to be pushing two ninety three ten, right? Oh, it was, you know, it was amazing. So I was, I came in, uh, Roger French, um, whom many former linemen from BYU just revere, um, was this very iconic figure um, as offensive line coach. He was this prototypical line coach and just kind of a mad scientist type guy. And that's what most off, really good offensive linemen coaches are. are. Um, you know, he could take a guy and, and just work with him and, you know, he was a guy that took me. I came in at, um, I think when I first came to BYU, my freshman year, I was right around 30, 35. I went on a mission, came back about 42, and I left BYU about 65. Um, and yet, you know, it was, um, he, we were, right, we passed the ball, passed it a lot with uh, Jim McMahon Young when I was there. And um, so all we had to do, just pass block. And, and so you didn't need a huge huge guy, just guys that were good techniques and could work together. And, and, and he was able to, he was a master at being able to take that and taking guys and do that. Bart, you hail from Albany, Georgia. And as you mentioned, uh, played with Steve Young and Jim McMahon and played on some iconic teams coached by Lavelle Edwards. How would you differentiate between those two great quarterbacks at BYU? How, how were they maybe similar and, and how were they different? <laughs> Uh, I can tell you they were different. I'm not sure. They were <laughs> no, yeah, you know, no, no, no. They, they were, you know, they were both great quarterbacks, but very different. 
um, different mentality, different, you know, I mean, Jim was this, this guy that had this just unbelievable, he exuded this confidence that you're like, you know, when you got on the field with Jim McMahon, you just like, he took over. He was this guy. And then Steve Young was this guy that he didn't, he wanted, he didn't want to disappoint anybody. And he just, he wanted to win because others, you know, people would be disappointed. And, and that's why the first start, he went to Georgia and threw six interceptions. But anyway, that's, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, they were great uh, off the field, very different, um, you know, and, and had just a different way of, of going about it. Uh, but as far as football players, I mean, got to be the two best football players that probably, you know, in my at least in my era anyway. Obviously, that that went through BYU. Give us some insight into kind of uh, what happened during your career because '77 is this amazing season. But Giff is going to be a Heisman finalist. He gets hurt. Mark takes over and is unbelievable. Right? Speaking of like six interceptions, you know, the second game after the seven touchdown game. But then you go on a mission, you come back. 80 is an amazing season. 81 was fantastic. Yeah. 82, Steve's figuring it out. So that in 83, once you go to the USFL, he really turns it on. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But th that was an interesting. So you end up snapping the ball to some of the greatest quarterbacks in college football history, a bunch of college football Hall of Famers. I mean, that was an unbelievable era. It, it, listen, the the program was just, it had a, under Lavelle and his tutelage and his leadership was able to take this really nondescript and a program that should never have any national prominence into this, you know, to a national championship, a national prominence. And, uh, and has been able to enjoy those, you know, quite frankly, enjoying it even today because of those, what happened 35, 40 years ago. Understandably, we have been reliving uh, many of the iconic moments within BYU football uh, just because, you know, it's something that we like to do in the summer. And given the world circumstances, we like yeah, to do Yeah, I don't, I don't know this. if you heard about COVID, uh, but we're, we do a daily show, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're digging deep into this uh, history of BYU yeah. football. Um, and we love to get the perspective on those iconic moments from the players that lived it. So let's go to the 1980 Holiday Bowl against SMU. Uh, Jim and BYU, I mean, miraculously, even, or even in position to be close in this game, what do you remember about the Hail Mary uh, from that game? I mean, there's just so many moments, right? It's, it's, um, it was like men against boys. I mean, SMU, people didn't know at the time, but that was, that was by far the best. That was the best team that money could buy. Um, you right. know, as it turned out and the money's, I mean, they were getting more than a lot of NFL guys were getting to, to, you know, I was that wheeling, they were, you know, running and gunning. And I mean, there was, there's all kinds of stuff going on down in Texas with, um, guys just, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and suitcases of money. It was, it was crazy. Uh, I played with a couple of the guys. They had nine guys off that defense that went on to become starters in the NFL Wow. on the Ooh. defensive teams. Um, you know, it was just a phenomenal, you know, Right, Dickerson and, and Craig James. I mean, it's just you go on and on and on. And uh, that offensive line was just they were studs. I remember we we were warming up looking out at them going, Oh my gosh. You know, we, we thought we were pretty good. And then we got there, we just saw the physicality, just the physical nature of those guys. Those were men. I mean, we were like we were high school kids compared to them. So for us to even to be in a situation, and, and, you know. They had they they were beating us so bad. They wound up taking the second teamers out and putting third teamers in guys that probably never even played all season. And then when we started to get some rhythm going and Vi returns a touch, you know, we punt for a touchdown. We, you know, we start making some stops and we make a few plays. And you know, once we got the momentum, it was it was we had that position where, you know, although unlikely, you know, three seconds left and fifty yards to go, um, you know. They didn't put their starters back in who'd been sitting out for almost a half and were completely, you know, I mean, these guys had to put their uniforms back on. <laughs> and uh, it was just, you know, and we were, you know, at, in the moment, you just don't realize it, what, what it all means or what it's going to mean. But, um, you know, it just was, was very unlikely. And um, I mean, I, I'm going against Michael Carter. Michael Carter winds up becoming a, he, he still holds the, 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 national high school record for shot put at 82 feet. He's, and I don't think anybody's come within like five feet of his record. He's, it's the longest standing high school track record that there is. And he was a silver medalist in the Olympics. He was the first round draft uh, pick for the uh, 
49ers and was a you know was just a stud of a defensive uh, t- nose tackle. He's a guy I was playing against, and he, he's beat me like a redheaded stepchild. Uh, it's just, I, it was so bad. And um, I mean, my I blocked him just enough, and he got around me. He was going to crush Jim. Jim just heaves it up into the end zone. You know, it goes through their arms into Clay Brown, and um, you know, we kick the extra point. And we win by a point. It's kind of unlikely. So once Clay catches that ball, are you then focused on hey? I got to go snap this to win the game. Are you, are no, you, I wasn't snapping. No, Oh, you weren't no, snapping. Okay. Was, no, 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 no. We had, you know, in college, you have enough guys where you have a specialty like they do in the NFL sure. just for that. I, I did in the NFL, but I didn't, I didn't have to snap in college. No. So, so, you so could, no, as soon as that happened, I said, all right, I, I said, my job, I had to go pick up Jim because uh, my guy just pasted Jim after he threw the ball. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go scrape him off the field and kind of help him. You know, he was kind of, Straighten his helmet was sideways, and uh, he, he took quite a few hits in that game. Bart Oates with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, we'll finish with this. One of your other former teammates has a prominent role in BYU athletics, as in he is the athletic director, Tom Holmo. Uh, what yep. was Tom like as a teammate in that golden era? Uh, you know, he's a defensive back. I don't get involved with defensive back. I don't <laughs> I couldn't even tell you their names. Listen, I was an offensive lineman. If I, you know, if it didn't really, you know, I had these blinders on. Is like this. Now, after the fact, I got to know. I got to know Tom really well. He was when I was went to San Francisco and playing with Steve. Um, we won the Super Bowl in '94. Uh, Tom was actually a defensive backs coach, and uh, we had a couple of other guys that were BYU guys, and so we had a, a pretty good collection there of. Uh, of BYU guys at San Francisco. So I got to know Tom and Tom's a a really good friend. He's done a great job uh, as the athletic director at BYU, really leading all the, you know, entire athletic department into creating such, you know, opportunities and uh, keeping us at that national prominence, which is, um, uh, it's hard to do in today's era, particularly given the, you know, with the the power conferences and, and, you know, the money's involved and, uh, I just think it's just what BYU has done is just phenomenal. All right. We're going to send our crack research team to uh, double check on all of your TV appearances, but we know for sure we can add you now to BYU sports nation. All right. Thank you. Like I said, I checked, I checked off my bucket list today. One of the bucket list items. <laughs> Bart, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Bart. Thanks guys. Hey, and you know what? I'm proud to be in third place. Uh, Trevor and, and, um, and Greg kite. Those uh, two awesome dudes. An extremely humble approach. Thanks for the time, my friend. Thanks, guys. Bardo.